Hey everyone, in this video I'm gonna show you how you can make yourself this kind of subscriber animation button inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. First, you wanna go to FX library, look for Fusion Composition, add it on your timeline, right click and then open Infusion page. In here, you want to click this icon, which is the background, which is gonna be added on your node 3. Connect it to your media out, then highlight your background and go to the inspector on the right side. Then change the background alpha to a values of 0. By doing that, everything in between background and media in will be with transparent background. Next, while your background is still highlighted, you want to create another background, which is automatically gonna bring you a merge one node in between them. Then select this second background, go to the inspector while still highlighted, and you can change the color. For my background, I'm picking gray, and I'm moving on with the next step. While this background is highlighted, I'm gonna select another quick tool from my menu and that is a rectangle. While clicking on it, it will be automatically connected to the background and as you can see, you can also move it in the viewer screen. I'm pulling the sides of that rectangle on my viewer screen to determine the size of that. So I'm gonna make a small rectangle and then leave it on the bottom side of my viewer screen. Also, I'm going in the inspector and I'm gonna increase slightly the values of corner radius so that I can make the corners a little bit curved. Moving on with the next object, I'm gonna select the merge one node and I'm gonna add another background node. This time I'm gonna change the background of this node to a red because we're gonna use that for the background of our subscribe button. While this background is highlighted, I'm gonna select another rectangle and I'm gonna adjust the size the same as before, just a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna leave it in the right side of that first box, just like that. And also I'm gonna add a tiny bit of corner radius as well on this one. Then I'm gonna highlight this background tree and I'm gonna click on the text icon, which is automatically gonna create a merge node connecting the text and the background tree. Then I'm highlighting this text node and I'm inserting the subscribe. And now I'm moving my subscribe text just over my red background, leaving it like that. Now I'm highlighting this merge to node and then I'm clicking once again on the text icon right here. That way I'm adding a new merge node with the text. I'm highlighting the text and this text is gonna be using for my subscriber name. I'm typing modern guides, but you can write anything. I'm bringing it down in size and I'm repositioning it around here. Then I'm going to shading. I'm going to page number three and I'm enabling the black shadow. I'm zooming in so you can see better. By enabling the black shadow, we're allowing us to make our subscriber's name pop a little bit more. So that's always nice. Next, I'm pressing F2 over my text too, so I can write down what is inside that note and I'm writing your name. On my background number two, I'm doing the same. I'm naming it main background. That way, if further I need to change something, I know in which note I can go. Then highlight merge number four and adding another text, which is creating us a merge number five. And I'm selecting text number two and I'm typing there the subscriber count. Let's say for example, 3.5K subscribers. I'm bringing it down in size and I'm placing it just under the name. Also, I choose to change the subscriber color to green. And also, I'm changing the font style to regular, making it a little bit thinner. I'm highlighting this text to note and I'm pressing F2 again. That's why I'm renaming it. I'm typing subscriber count. Next up, I'm highlighting merge 5 and then I'm pressing control space. And there is a toolbox on which I'm typing loader and then clicking on add. In this loader, you want to place your image I'm choosing this one and then I'm selecting the transform which is connected between merge 5 and my image so that now I can adjust the image and change the position. I'm bringing it down in size and I'm leaving it on the left side next to the subscribers and the channel name owner. Once I adjusted the size, I also want to add a little bit of curving on that. So I'm highlighting my loader which is my image and also I'm clicking on the ellipse icon which is gonna add the ellipse node. While the ellipse node is highlighted, I'm going in the inspector and I'm changing the values of width and height to a values of 1 so I can make a complete circle. So now we're having a logo which is in circle and as you can see still nothing is happening. We just finished creating our design and now it comes to the fun part where we need to animate everything. So we're gonna highlight everything except the background and the media out. Want to right click and select group. That way we're gonna create one node which is group everything that we just did. Now we need to highlight this group that we have just created. As you can see, you can always open it and see what's inside and change something. 
Now you need to add a transform node. I'm going in the beginning of my timeline around frame number 10 and I'm pulling everything down so that it's not appearing on the window. I'm creating a keyframe next to center and then I'm moving 20 or 30 frames forward and I'm bringing back everything to its original place. That way I'm having it automatically created a second keyframe and so far we're having just this slowly sliding in which is not so impressive. It needs more further adjustments so we need to highlight this transform 2 go to the spline tab we're gonna enable this transform 2 we're gonna click here so we can see all the keyframes and then we're gonna select this icon right here which is the s that means it's gonna select all the keyframes that we're having and then we're gonna press s on the keyboard so we can smooth off the keyframes just like that and now we're gonna grab this keyframe we're gonna pull it here and then we're gonna grab the other keyframe and we're gonna connect it to this one that way we're creating easing in so it's going faster and it's gonna slow dally out until the second keyframe comes as you can see it's already a little bit better it's a little bit smoother the spline tap is one of my favorites in the fusion page another thing what you can do inside of here is that you can go to settings here in the inspector you can enable the motion blur and increase the quality value to 4 and the shutter angle to 230. That way we're adding some motion blur and making it even more smoother. As you can see, I'm gonna preview now. It's looking good by my opinion, but we're still in the beginning of the process of animating the whole thing. Next step, we need to make our ending because our animation is still standing still. So we need to create another transform. So we're highlighting the previous transform and we're creating another one. Then we're going around 20 frames before our timeline ends. I'm selecting the keyframe next to center. And then we're going around 10-15 frames forward around here. And I'm gonna make our button disappear again from the bottom. That way when I play it through right now, as you can see it is slowly going down. Disappearing as the video ends. And then we're gonna highlight this transform tree. We're gonna open the spline tab. Make sure just transform tree is selected. We're gonna view everything. We're gonna select both of the keyframes by pressing here and then pressing S on the keyboard so we can smooth out the keyframes. This time we're not gonna make an easing in or easing out. We're just gonna leave it just as it is. I think it's looking all right as it is. So we're moving out with the other animations. So now we're gonna do the animation in between. So it is sliding in and it's sliding out, but in the middle of the video, nothing is happening. So we need to make uh, animations on that part as well. So we're opening the group that we have just created. And in here, as you can see, I'm playing it through. It is sliding from the bottom and it's standing still, nothing happening, and then it's disappearing. So now we need to make something happening in the middle. So first we're gonna animate the logo. So I'm highlighting the note that is saying your logo and I'm adding a transform node by clicking here. Then I'm highlighting this transform and I'm going in the inspector. I'm going on the places on my timeline where my button is already visible around the middle of the clip. And what I want to change on that logo is that I want to add a little bit of spinning on the angle. So I'm creating just three or four keyframes on that angle. So a frame around here, I'm going to create a keyframe on the angle. Then I'm moving three, four frames forward, changing the values of angle just a tiny bit just so it wiggles left and right just like that I'm creating three frames and I'm ending it in values of zero and once again we need to highlight this transform as it is right now go to the spline tab and now we're gonna work everything in the group so the group is selected and there's also an angle that we just did I'm gonna zoom to fit I'm gonna select every keyframe from here and I'm pressing S so I can smooth out the keyframes. I'm previewing it so I can see the quality and I like what I see so I'm gonna leave it as it is. As you can see it's popping up and it's moving the logo left and right and that's it. So now we're gonna animate the subscribers and the channel owner name. Just under subscriber count I'm adding a transform node and I'm gonna add the keyframes again this time on the subscriber count. I'm moving further in the timeline where my animation is visible and I'm creating a pivot just under my subscribers so that way when I change the size it's gonna change the pivot point from that subscribers I'm leaving just two keyframes just under the subscriber count changing the values from 0.9 to 1 just a small zooming in as you can see I'm gonna zoom in so you can see better 
that my subscriber count is zooming in just slightly. So I need to highlight this transform 5 and go to the spline tab again. And now we're gonna smooth off the keyframes again. I'm gonna make sure my transform 5 is highlighted in my spline tab. I'm gonna select both of the keyframes and I'm gonna create easing in curve. I'm zooming in so you can see once again that it is slowly popping up the subscriber count with the easing in curve. Next, we can also go to settings, add a motion blur, quality 4, shutter angle 230, and that's the final result. Also, we're gonna make the same effect on the channel owner name. So we are highlighting the node that is saying your name on the node tree. And we're going to click on another transform icon, just as did for before. Then we're gonna change the pivot point just under our channel name owner and make the size of that going from 0.9 to 1 with also adding a spline easing in curve just like we did for the subscriber count. Now I'm preview it so you can see once again what we're having. We're leaving a little bit of distance between the subscriber count and the subscriber name popping up. We don't want them to pop in the same exact time so that it's not looking robotic. And if you want to save this, you can go to your power bins and you can hold your fusion composition and drag it into your master. In the master, you can rename it as you like. If you don't see your power bin, you can go here on the three dots and enable the power bins right here, which is on the bottom. And if you want to use it in a future project, you can just drag it and drop it over your timeline. And then you can open your group and in here you can change your name, your background color and subscriber count. Also, you can watch this video right here and giving away this free animated subscribe button that you have just saw me doing, except the picture. I'm having it free on my coffee page. You can watch this video or download it from the description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.